Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Ned Bellavance, Ned1313 on Twitter, and welcome to the Daily Check-In for July 7th, 2020. It is Terraform Tuesday, my favorite day of the week, because I get to talk about Terraform stuff. And this week's topic comes from a submission from one of the listeners. They had a question about how Terraform deals with modules and variables and those types of things. So I put together a few examples, but I want to talk about it at a higher level first and then kind of get down into the weeds on things. So before I do that, a couple housekeeping things. Because it's Terraform Tuesday, I just want to remind you real quick that I do have a Terraform certification guide that I wrote with Aiden Ermi. So I will include a link to that in the description. Also, the examples that I have in Terraform Tuesday topics are available on my GitHub. I will place a link to the repository for those examples as well. So that's two things to keep in mind. If you're going for the certification, I've gotten some great feedback so far that the guide has been really helpful to figure out exactly what to study and give some tips around the exam itself. And I have a bunch of videos about that too, and maybe I'll add one up in the annotations. We'll see. Anyway, so uh, that is all the housekeeping stuff. First, I wanna check in with you. How you doing? What's going on? It's Tuesday. Are you planning to have tacos today? Because it could be Taco Tuesday. Now, actually, I'm not having tacos tonight. Uh, we decided that we're going to do takeout from somewhere else today. I don't know if we've decided. Oh, we're going We're going to get pizza. That's right, because the pizza place that we love is closed on Mondays, and we wanted to take out yesterday, and it just wasn't going to happen. But today, we're going to get that delicious, delicious pizza, and it is just absolutely fantastic. So I'm excited about that. Food always gets me pumped. And uh, with no further ado, let's talk about the way that Terraform deals with modules and variables. All right. So let's start at a high level and just talk about modules for a second, because the, the topic can be a little confusing and the term is somewhat overloaded. And I run into this when I'm talking about modules in my Terraform courses as well. When I talk about modules, I could be talking about the module for the course because the course is broken into modules. I could be talking about the module in terms of Terraform, and I could be talking about a root module or a child module. So let's kind of try to break this all down here. When you're dealing with Terraform, your main configuration, that is the root module. So when you talk about sort of the hierarchy of modules, you've got your root module at the top. That's the root of your configuration. And so even though you don't explicitly think of it as a module, it absolutely is a module that you're defining. It's just not being called by anything else. It's the standalone root module. Now that root module can call child modules to create things. So let's say you wanted to create a VPC or a VNet or an AKS cluster. Any of those are available as modules. And so you can invoke a module. The actual module itself is simply just more Terraform configuration. It could be broken up into different .tf files, whatever makes sense for the author. But basically, it has some sane defaults in it, so you don't have to specify as much information as you would have to if you're doing something like an AKS deployment. You don't have to specify every single little thing about AKS it has some same defaults built in, and you can override some of those defaults by specifying different values for those variables. So your variables are the input to the module, and then the module is gonna expose some information back to you in the form of outputs. So inputs are variables going in, and outputs are values going out. Anything that's not explicitly exposed as an output is not available to you in the root module. We'll get back to that in a second. Now, child modules can also call their own modules. So if you were building a pretty complicated beast, you could have a module invoking a module invoking a module. Now, I don't recommend going any deeper than that because then things can get really confusing quickly. You don't want that many Russian dolls all nested together, right? Okay, so that is probably some good background in terms of modules. Now, the question becomes, what can I pass to these modules and what can they give me back? And with dot 12, they added a more sophisticated type system to HashiCorp configuration language. So the things that you can hand to a module can be anything you can define within a variable. So if you can define it as a variable, 
then the person writing the module could also define it as a variable and can accept that type as input. And then that type can be very simple. It could be a string or a number, or that type can be quite complex. So let's jump over to VS Code, and I've got an example going here, and I apologize if you're listening to the podcast. You'll just have to watch the video later, or hopefully my explanation will make sense. Let's go over to screen share. Okay, here we go. We're looking at Visual Studio Code, and hopefully that's blown up big enough for you. And let's see what I've got here. I've got uh, the, today's folder, 2020-0707, and within there, I have a subfolder that's a mock module. So this isn't really a very useful module, but let's take a look at what's in this mock module. And it's very simple. It defines two different variables. So remember, these variables inside this module, those are your inputs to send information to the module. And I have two different kinds here. The first one is super duper simple. It's a type string with a default value of my dash string. That's it. If you don't submit a value when you're invoking this module, it will use the default value that's in this variable. Okay, so that's very simple. It's just a string type. Now let's take a look at the second one. It's a complex object. Let's break it down because our type defines not only what type of object, but some information about it. So let's say I'm trying to build firewall rules a list of firewall rules that I want to submit to this module. And then perhaps it's going to go out and create security groups in AWS or firewall rules against my, I don't know, Palo Alto firewall or something. Who knows the, the sky's limit. But the thing is, I want to be able to submit this list and then have it go do something with that list. Now, this list of firewall objects, a list type can hold more complex object types within it. So in our type definition, this first list is saying, the object is the variable I'm submitting is going to be of list type. Okay, makes sense. And then within that list, I'm going to further define the types of objects that are going to be in that list. And so I'm using the object keyword here. I'm not using map, I'm using object here. Object is a type is object and map are closely related. And that's a very long discussion that we're not going to get into here. But basically, I'm saying this is a list of objects. And then I'm going to define what are the keys that I expect to see in the object that I'm submitting in this list. Well, I expect a name key, a start port, an end port, and a protocol. And then I'm also defining what type of value each of these keys should have. So for my name key, I'm expecting a string. For my start and end port, I'm expecting a number. And for my protocol, again, I'm expecting a string. Now, this isn't doing full validation. It's not looking to say, oh, the protocol you specified is not a valid value. It's just looking for a string. Now, Terraform 0.13 does introduce some validation with regular expressions for this type of thing. So you could actually validate that it's TCP, UDP, you know, whatever protocol you want it to be or star for all. You could validate all that, but that's dot 13 and that's beta and we're not getting into that. Okay, so I've defined this complex object and I've also defined a default value for this complex type input. And for that, I've specified a list. So these square brackets, starting with the square bracket says this is a list. And then when in there within there, I've put one object, which is simply an HTTP rule that allows port 80 with the TCP protocol. Really straightforward. Then down at the bottom, you remember I said outputs are how you get information out of a module. So anything that this module does, any resources it creates, you as the root module have no access to that information unless it's been exposed as an output. Down in the output, I have put the value of my complex object. So I'm basically giving back the input that was submitted as output. That's not super useful, but it does demonstrate the concept a little bit. In my main.tf, I am defining a local variable. And I did a separate video about local and locals versus variables. And you may want to watch that if you find that a little bit confusing. But basically, I'm defining a local value that I want to use with my module. And in this case, I'm creating two rules, basically ones for HTTPS and ones for just allowing all of UDP. Okay, 
and then scrolling down, I invoke module twice. I invoke the same module with no values submitted at all. And so it's just going to use the default values that are in that module. And then I invoke the module again, but this time I am passing it the local dot rules variable, uh, local value. And I'm submitting that for the value of complex object. So I'm referring to the name of one of the variables that's inside that module, and I'm giving it a value to assign to that variable. That's how you pass values into the module. And then if I want to get values out of the module, if we look down at the output, under the output, I have a default variable, and I'm pulling the value, and the value is module.default variable dot complex output. So I defined an output called complex output in my module. And now I can use that value. In this case, I'm just outputting it, but you could use that output value for something else in your configuration. So hopefully that gives you an idea of how information is flowing in and out of modules between the root module and the child modules in Terraform. Now, if you go look at a more complicated module than my example here, you'll see that the variables that are defined inside that module and kind of how they work, and you'll be able to better parse out how to use that module if maybe let's say the instructions are not especially clear. So that's all I have for today. I know I ran a little bit over time, but I, I hope that was useful. And oh, I, hi, uh, Ashish, thank you for joining today. Appreciate that. For next week's Terraform Tuesday, I had someone ask me about using the AKS module, or not the AKS, the uh, Azure Functions module for creating Azure Functions, and they were having a little trouble with that. So they said they're going to share a GIST with me that has their configuration. GIST? GIST? I don't know which one it is. And so we're going to take a look at that and maybe pick apart how it could be done uh, and how they can get these Azure functions created using the existing resources and modules. Okay, so that'll be next week. And tomorrow is tech analysis. Got some interesting stuff for that tomorrow. Uh, but that's all I have for today. Please share, like, subscribe, and, sh and you know, share out with other people. Until tomorrow, stay healthy and stay safe, everybody.